Hello. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about sequencing and timing your voice. Over the past few weeks, we've been putting together the basics of a golf swing and then learning how to move from one part of the golf swing to another. But one of the stark realities of this game is that a good technique isn't necessarily a guarantee of a good shot. I think that's one of the most perplexing things when you're working on your game, you look at your videos, everything seems to be a lot better, but you're still not really hitting great golf shots. And the trouble is that, unfortunately, it is your timing and your coordinate, coordination, your ability to coordinate this movement, which is actually going to decide whether you hit a golf ball correctly or not. There's an awful lot of people out there with very poor technical golf swings who are hitting very good golf shots because they have actually learned how to coordinate the movement that they have and how to time the movement that they have and they're hitting good shots anyway. In the perfect world you've got the best of both worlds. You have a good solid foundation in the basics in your technique and you've learned to time that technique and coordinate that technique correctly. So how or what are the steps to coordinating and timing your golf swing? Well, the very first thing to understand that it is not something that your conscious mind should be doing. You should not be standing over the golf ball and counting steps or trying in any way to control your golf swing with any kind of clever tips from your conscious mind. What you've got to do is give your, your golf swing and the, and the different parts, the component parts of your golf swing to your small brain, the so-called cerebellum, and let him do juggling. And that is basically how you're going to play your best golf. So if you actually see people on the golf course, or maybe you've experienced yourself, that day when you're not really thinking about anything, you're just enjoying the nice weather and just hitting the golf ball well, and you really don't know why, well, it's because basically your conscious brain has taken a day off and you are just playing with your intuition with your feeling and with your cerebellum. You do have to help your cerebellum though and that basically means getting triggers in your swing which help your cerebellum to know where you are in your swing and that means that what you've got to do to start off is become conscious of the different phases of your golf swing. If you're going to time something you've got to time parts a bit like a dance what are you doing at each step in the dance? And once you've done that regularly and you've put it to music, then suddenly it all seems to go in a harmony where you don't have to think about it, where you can turn off your conscious mind again and let it go. But this means not consciously thinking about particularly particular technical parts of your golf swing, but rather what I would like to call phases of your golf swing. So what are the phases of your golf swing? Well, usually you will have one or two phases in the backswing and one or two phases in the downswing, depending on the way that you've built your swing together. In the swing that we have, we will usually have two phase back and two phase downswing. The phases of the backswing are basically the start of the backswing, which is going to take you up to the top of your swing and just before the top of the swing, the centering of your swing, which is actually getting you back to a point where you can start your downswing by initiating the transition. The transition is the first phase of your downswing. In the transition, I start the downswing and get the rotation moving and then I go into the hitting phase of the, down, of the downswing where I'm going into extension in my legs and in my arms and that is helping me to actually accelerate the golf club through the golf ball. So for me, my timing is built on basically a one, two, one, two rhythm. There are, however, many golfers out there who don't really have much of a feeling of any phases in the backswing. It feels to them like a swing it up, and then swing it down and through golf swing. So there you will be kind of one, two, three. 
giving them a number or giving them a name, like I say, will help you to consciously understand the phases of your golf swing, but isn't necessarily going to help your timing. What you've got to do there is try and get a feel what you're doing in that part of the golf swing and how long it's taking you. That means basically getting uh, feedback from your body to actually say in which phase are you in. And I would really recommend that you use your feet for this. This is one of the reasons that we are all struggling a little bit uh, with the timing in our golf swing is then we are getting far too wooden in the way that our legs and feet are working. That feeling of not hitting the golf ball unless you stand still is actually cutting your cerebellum off from the feedback that it gets through pressure changes on your feet. And if you think about dancing, then that is something you will actually definitely do. And even I think if you're playing a musical instrument, especially if you were standing up playing a musical instrument, you will never see somebody just moving their fingers to play the piano. Their entire body is moving. You will hardly ever see anybody playing a violin without actually getting into the emotion of this. And the movements of their body are actually helping their unconscious or subconscious mind to actually know where they are in the piece. And it's a bit similar here. So when I'm actually swinging the club back, to start off with, there isn't really much of a trigger to when I actually start the backswing, but I definitely have a trigger to when I'm at the end of the backswing. And this is as I feel the centering of my backswing and the pressure moving back forward to the balls of my, my lead foot. That is something which I can consciously feel and something which obviously my cerebellum will also be able to feel. Obviously after that comes this kind of dipping in my swing as the trail leg goes down into the same kind of height as the lead leg was at the top of the backswing. And that is actually this kind of free fall movement, this almost first lightening and then, then weighting of the ground is basically giving me the start of the downswing and the start of the second phase because there's obviously kind of a landing position where I then kick off. And that is basically all I need. So if I were to make the movement just with my hips and my legs, the backswing ends when I feel the pressure on the front feet, I go into the downswing and as I feel the land, the feel that I've landed on the, on the ground, I start to press off as the knees basically reach the same height as one another and I turn around. I'm trying to get this rotation and this move or transition going at the same time and then coming through. So in the backswing, I've got basically the feeling of kind of start and tilt or center, sit and extend. Start and tilt, sit and extend. Start and tilt, sit and extend. Start tilt, sit, extend, start, tilt, sit, extend. You can actually see while I'm speaking through that, I am having trouble actually talking at the speed that I need to do the movement, which means at some stage, you've then got to stop talking and just make practice swings. That's where in your mind, it might become a count. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Once you've got the count going, leave the count out as well. Feel the pressure. Feel the pressure move in your swing. And once you have the feeling that your swing seems to be running itself, go to the golf ball and hit the golf ball. I have not had the slightest thought about my, my timing or my rhythm when I was making that shot. I allowed my unconscious mind to do it by itself. And it's by getting the success that I get the confidence to allow my brain to do that more and more often and then take that onto the golf course and use it on the golf course. So. The first thing you're looking for is how many phases do you have in your swing? If you've been following this tuition, you should have four. 
two in the backswing, the start and the center, two in the downswing, the move and the extension. And first of all, you can talk your way through them. Start, center, move, extend. Start, center, move, extend. You can then start to count them. One, two, three, four, or one, two, one, two, whatever you prefer. At some stage, you stop even counting. Just feel the changes in pressure on your feet. And once you have the feeling that your body can do that, give it a golf ball. All of the good shots you hit on the round are more a result of good timing and coordination than they are of a good technique. You can time any technique, go out there and try it. And if it helps you, come back and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thanks to all of my patrons as ever for supporting me. I shall leave a link below if you'd like to become one of those.